Welcome, welcome to the at home in Christ celebration, like the Christmas celebration. Thank you so much for joining. It's great that you made it and that you that you have time to do this. Uh, that's wonderful. I love it. And even on Christmas Eve. So that's that's really beautiful. I have nowhere else to go. That's why I'm here. So wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy that you joined. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So today um, in our Christmas celebration, we have like three uh, episodes, you could say. It's like one of them is a meditation where we start with just to come into our stillness. And the next part is then listening to Joel, to his preparation for, for peace. And uh, after that, there is an and surprise so don't ask me what it is but there's a surprise so you better be in high expectancy waiting to see what is going on and i have no idea <laughs> all right um so yeah let's keep it really simple and um relax really deep into the Christmas light, the Christ light that is within you, that star that is always present in you. But now we're going to invite it in to be completely here in our in our uh, awareness, just like we practice all the time. But this is this is the way to do it. And this is where we come together. So I found a um, prayer from Joel in the parenthesis in eternity. And it's in fact expressing the one desire, expressing the one purpose that we're, uh, yeah, that we're going for. That is our, that is our guiding light is our fulfillment. It is all of that. So I read the prayer, but I, I made a, a video already from it. And we have, therefore, we have also uh, like French subtitles. Father, I am here with thee for only one purpose. I must know what thou art who thou art, and where thou art, and why thou art. I must even find, it, find out if thou art, attain some awareness, some consciousness, that thou dost exist, and that thou dost really exist within me. I must find some way of linking up the spirit with my individual life. I hunger and thirst to know thee, I must tabernacle with thee, commune with something within myself that is greater than my human self, something greater than my human capacity or human goodness or human evil, tabernacle with something in me that is divine. If there were not something divine in me or about me, I could not be alive, and I must know what this something is. O oh Lord, how long can I go on living without knowing thy presence within me? How long can this go on? Am I to live here three score years and ten, twenty, thirty, and at the end feel that I have contributed nothing to this world, nothing to thy kingdom, nothing to thy people? Why am I here on earth? Am I to live a wasted life with nothing to show for it at the end, but just a living? I would do thy will if I but knew thy will. I would live the spiritual life if I knew how to live it. Now here, in the inner sanctuary of my own being, cut off from the world, Father, reveal thyself, reveal thy will thy way, thy kingdom, reveal thy purpose to me. All right. 
right. <clears throat> All right. Before, thank you so much for joining in the meditation. And before we start listening to Joel, I just want to take a moment, you know, to, to share something. It is like um, uh, the great opportunity here, as you could see in the meditation, to, to just allow it to happen to you. It's like this beautiful Christ light is yours. It is in you. It can come into your awareness. And this is the best time for it. It's like, yeah, that's right now that's right now it's the best time for it and whether that's christmas or not it, it is your greatest gift to yourself all the time continuously so the beauty of it is that we keep um, doing all kinds of things and studying and all this and that's wonderful that's really great but in the end like just to let this come to you to open up, to leave everything, every concern outside, you could say. Joel says to cut off from the world, just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, leaving that all for what it is, seeing that suddenly there's space in your consciousness and it becomes quiet and still. So, and when it becomes quiet and still and open, there's an immediate influx, you could say, of light and love. And that's instantaneous. But it really feels, and, and we know this, but it really feels like a metamorphosis. It feels like a change, a rebirth, because the energy that suddenly is in your consciousness is highly vibrating highly alive is a whole different frequency than you're used to in your human ideas about yourself and um, so that to allow that to come to you literally is like takes you out of the tomb of humanity of the tomb of your humanhood the tomb of limitation of disease of disaster of of lack and all this like that is the that is really the total gift to yourself and and this is the moment to receive that so everything like everything here points to that to that star you know the christmas star in you that that you can literally bring down into your consciousness by being open and and getting out of the way to receive it However that however that can happen is is really miraculous you could say is like it's not under your conscious control to allow that but you can allow the space then it will be filled and and it will fulfill you and so we have all kinds of descriptions for this and we've shared this a lot and practice it a lot too so now in this time of Christ you could say is is the a really great moment to let that occur because it's like for one thing or another um, so we are getting a little bit softer during during Christmas times like okay yeah yeah let's give a little bit extra let's do a bit of this and let's do a bit of that it's like there's something different a different quality that is a cloud of giving um, surrounding us and so this is really the gift to yourself and you are the only one who can receive it and yeah that's really great so it's like writing yourself a letter you know this song right so you write yourself a letter and putting a lot of sweet words in it and well finally it's coming back to you it's on your doormat so this is how we give to you give to yourself and uh, in in the time of Christ we give to ourselves too and receive our own gift so that is a real something else you know it's like i give everything away i give everything away in order to receive that and and that's so great without an idea of sacrificing something not that but more like no my attitude my action of mind is giving this is what i do i give so joel 
and will prepare us too for peace because what is the greatest peace uh, what is the greatest gift to yourself than peace to experience peace you have arisen above the world because this world as you know is not a representation of peace so it must be found somewhere else and we found that place today you know like literally we found that place today and it's in you we discovered it is in you and nowhere else and no one else in you so so that's the the say the focus with the tape of joel peace can only be say received by you and you see that if you uh, say could um, say be free of any kind of limitation or any kind of competition or um, yeah dualistic thinking like black white or yellow <laughs> yellow purple um, for and against a little bit of this and a little bit of that um, you're still in, in caught between the two, so to speak, between a dualistic idea, between what you think is good and what you think is bad. So it still has to do with, with your own thinking and for the rest it, it is nothing. So to pass that by, to leave that for what it is, is really giving up your, your occupation because you have been occupied with it. And the time of Christ is really to give up this hobby of you to to deal with your thoughts to find the best ones to to make it all work and try to come up with new solutions to your perceived problems and all this and um, leaving that hobby for what it is saying like okay well i i played enough with it now it's time for the real deal and that is i have no idea how to do this i reveal thyself reveal what does it mean peace i want to experience that and in fact above everything else i want to experience that and that is our say christmas message to yourself my christmas message to me is to receive that for myself to experience peace even if i would just experience peace for just a moment wow that would already be so great to be free of the occupation of mind of figuring it all out making it work surviving um, making ends meet making doing whatever being concerned with your physicality being concerned with your children being concerned with all of this like the the whole um, letting go of that is is a bit of your function in in your transformation like this is really where the transformation takes place where the metamorphosis from yeah man of earth into a spiritual man is taking place and that is that's quite something that's quite something that's why we need each other in this that's why we join together because it is not a little thing it's easy as that like to to start this hobby that you had to be concerned with all of it to start your hobby with that took also a long time you developed your qualities in doing that now all these qualities are it's like you drop them you let them go but it evokes something in you of well is it already time to do so or maybe i hold on a little bit or maybe who knows how you deal with that but um since we meet and since we say have a common purpose in this it's going to be very helpful to remind each other of this it's like no no i cannot make anything real about your lack or your limitation or your health or not health or all the qualities that we think are qualities all this ideas about ourselves as human beings all this where the mind com comes up with as a presentation of why don't you take care of this are you supposed to take care of that are you do you have to do this do you have to do that everything that the mind presents as to occupy your mind with with in fact something that is not your concern at all is uh, 
is the process that we're in of letting that be undone in us, letting that be cleaned out. And in fact, say, having a focus beyond all of this into, into peace, like beyond all of this lies the peace of God. That's what you want to experience. Now, I didn't listen to the tape of Joel yet, but um, I, I want to start doing that in a moment um, with you, of course. And we, we listen to the second part of the, um, say, uh, pre preparation for peace. And so that's, that's what we're going to do right now. All right, so there was a little bit of a short talk, short Christmas talk, but it has everything to do with you and the, the release of the bondage of you to space and time, to humanhood. And seeing that the metamorphosis that is taking place in you is a very happy one. Because one thing for sure is like by every release of every step along the way, there's, there's an, like a happiness bubbling up in you of the fact like I don't have to do that any longer. Wow, what a relief. Oh, I don't have to carry that cross any, any longer. I don't have to do that. I'm perfectly taken care of. Like there's, there's one who takes care of me. And um, yeah, I am in the Father and the Father is with me. You know, I am in the Father. I am my Father are one. That is my experience. That is, in fact, my reality. And not only in fact, but it is actually your experience of yourself. The only experience of yourself that is true. So, Joel, come and share with us how we should prepare for peace. Let us hear it. And as I have told our students so often in class instruction, if you think for a moment that the truth lies in my books, you are going to look in vain because you can read them all the way through and not find it. The truth is within your consciousness. The reading of these books, the study of them, the practice of principles, will lead you to that truth within yourself, develop it, and in the end bring about the Christ birth. The books will not do it of themselves. Your dedication is what does it. Where does money enter in? Well, books cost money. Teachers must live. Centers must be provided or paid for. It isn't that the money in and of itself will buy it for anyone. No use of anyone believing that they can write out a check for a thousand or ten thousand dollars and have it. No, no, no. It isn't money in that sense. You cannot buy it with money. But there is a certain amount of money involved in the incidentals. Be assured of this. Yes, I'm going to use this illustration for this. I think this, this fascinates me. There is a book available this Christmas for children. Tiny little bit of a one. By a cartoonist. And the subject of it is security, how security is attained. Some of you have undoubtedly seen it, probably bought it for children. It's very entertaining. It shows a dog and his dog house. And it says security is when you own your own home. And it shows a schoolboy coming home from school. And it says security is uh, when you find your mother is home in the kitchen when you get there. Security is having someone to lean on. Oh, it's a whole 
little book of cartoons showing the different way that security is made uh, evident to children and animals. One of our students made a book based on that, showing what security is from the infinite way standpoint. That security lies in meditation, and security lies in grace, security lies in withinness. Security lies in understanding the nature of God as individual consciousness. And there you have it. The moment that a spiritual student believes that truth is in a book or in a teaching or in a church or in a teacher, they are making it external, just as external as if they place their security in their property. or in their employment. Spiritual truth and wisdom is not in a book. Ye search the scriptures thinking that ye find truth therein. No. Scriptures reveal where truth is to be found within you. And books of mysticism, of spiritual wisdom, cannot give you truth, they can only reveal where truth is to be found. They can reveal where health is to be found, where safety is to be found, where security is to be found, and then the individual student must locate it there, must experience it there, so that, like Moses, Isaiah, Jesus, that you actually have the experience of the birth of the Christ, the birth, the awakening of that transcendental consciousness which reveals to you, be not afraid. I am with you. And then, and then all of a sudden you realize that's what Moses said. That's what Moses said. I am that I am. That's what Isaiah said. I. I. That is what Jesus revealed. I am the bread, the meat, the wine, and the water. Man shall not live by bread alone, for I am the substance, the food. I, the Spirit of God within me, I that existed before Abraham, not Jesus, who was born a year or two B.C., but I who am before Abraham, I am the substance of your life, the law of health, of harmony, of purity. A long, long time ago, the psychiatrist Jung discovered that the central theme of healing is God. Now we learn that in the, the university where the Freudian psychiatry is taught in Vienna, that they now have also accepted that God is the central theme and must be the central theme of healing. Of course, this is true. But just as Jung revealed that he was not speaking of the God of the churches, nor of the religion of the churches, but the God and the religion of the original revelators, so must you understand today, as a pioneer on this path, that the God you are turning to is not the God of the churches. The religion you are turning to is not the religion of the churches as that religion is today because they even are permitting their bishops to write books and acknowledge that their God isn't God. You 
must learn the nature of God and of prayer, even if intellectually at first, and abide with it, live with it, practice it, until you too have a Christmas morning, a morning of spiritual rebirth, a dawning in your consciousness of the nature of the Christ. Because when the Christ is born in you, evil begins to lose its reality. Don't expect that it's all going to disappear in uh, one breaking of a bubble, because it isn't that way. It isn't that way in our individual experience. It isn't that way in the history of uh, our students or our patients. It is an abiding with this Christmas experience, making every day of the year a Christmas day, a day of new rebirth, new dedication, and uh, Letting this Christ spirit that dawns on a specific day, let it increase. Let it become more and more powerful until eventually it takes over. That was the day in which Paul said, I live, yet not I. Christ liveth my life. In other words, again, it wasn't the man Jesus, the man that Jesus had been crucified. It was the Christ who took over the life of Paul and lived his life, went before him to make the crooked places straight, spoke through his lips, financed the churches when the churches couldn't finance themselves, so it is that with the first spiritual awakening, you begin to perceive that error lessens in your experience, probably slowly. Sometimes there is a healing of one nature or another that appears to be a miracle, and to our sense is. But do not be fooled by this and believe that all of a sudden you have the miracle of life, the key of life, and that your entire experience is going to be of that nature, because it isn't so. Even as Paul was teaching and preaching the Christ, he had to take a few bad licks from the human mind. Even the Master, Christ Jesus, who contributed so much to our knowledge of this transcendental consciousness, even he had to pay the price of crucifixion. Therefore, do not believe that this really means that with the birth of your first Christ experience, your first Christmas, that you are to live the rest of your days without problems because it doesn't work that way. There may be quite a few periods of illness or of lack until you yourself are deeply rooted and find that this Christ completely takes over your experience. Then, of course, there will be the experience as others come to you for healing and then for teaching, and you find that vicariously you will be suffering their lives and their problems, and uh, it will be just as bad an experience for you as if you yourself were undergoing them, and sometimes worse. Many a time you'll have the feeling, I'd rather take this problem over from you and suffer it for you than see you suffering it. But you won't be able to do it because life is an individual experience. 
birth of the Christ, then, is your Christmas day and mine. It is that particular moment in which there is something in the nature of an awakening or in the nature of an awareness in which we do realize that something is now functioning of which we heretofore were not aware. It may only be in fleeting glimpses. It may be in a few individual experiences. But for all of us, the experience is the same. Paul had to wait nine years for the fulfillment of the Christ in him before he could even go out into the ministry. I was thrown into the healing ministry within two years after my first experience, but I wasn't given the teaching ministry for 16 more years. It's very slow developing, very slow maturing. The reason is, well, probably in the understanding of the meaning of the word maturity. Maturity is the ability to think objectively, not through the conditioned mind. A person may be 40, 50, or 60, or 70 years of age and be immature. A person may have PhDs in several languages and be immature because maturity has nothing to do with age or education. Maturity has only to do with the ability to think objectively to see understandingly, to throw off the conditioning that we have been given through birth, race, education, whatnot. When the Freudian school can throw off its atheism and say God is the central theme of healing, they have reached maturity because they have thrown off the conditioned mind and they now can think through an unconditioned state of awareness. Every time that a person who has been brought up in some orthodox religion can throw off the restriction of a belief in a personalized God and can realize that God never was a Hebrew, nor a Christian, nor a Buddhist, that God is spirit, they have attained their maturity. Those, regardless of their education or age, who must still personalize God are immature. Now, this maturity is not given to us except by an inner grace. There is a something within us that prepares us for maturity. When maturity comes, it brings with us spiritually, a spiritual maturity brings with it the dawning of this otherness, this something of which we had not previously been aware, this something that actually goes before us to make the crooked places straight, to prepare mansions for us, where heretofore there were hovels or ghettos. You see, and you must know this, as pioneers on the spiritual, on the mystical path, you must know this, that the freedom that the Hebrew is to know in a Christian world, the freedom that the Negro and the African is to know in a white world, the freedom that an Oriental is to know in a Caucasian world. 
This freedom is not going to be attained by anyone's armies. This freedom is not going to be attained by marches. This freedom is going to be attained first through education, culture, and then spiritual development. These are the three steps necessary for the attainment of individual and collective freedom. You must never forget that in this land of the stars and stripes, we have witnessed the lack of freedom in many minorities. In New England, both the Jews and the Roman Catholics experienced it. In the South, the Negro and the Jew has experienced it, and the Catholic. In most parts of our nation, the Oriental has experienced it. But to each of these, the answer is the same. You have to earn your freedom, not with guns, with education, with culture, with spiritual development, until you are recognized by your fellow man as an equal until we are recognized by each other as equals, not because there is an army in back of me saying so, but because the way in which I have lived my life or the way in which you have lived your life testifies to equality. This subject plays an important part in our spiritual development because there is going to be another period in 1964 in which this country is going to be faced with more armies trying to enforce freedom, more marches, more taking up of weapons, American against American. And there's nobody out there in that world that has any solution for it. The only solution will be if we, as pioneers on the mystical path, can receive the Christ and loose the Christ so that evil loses its power, the evil in human consciousness, the error in human consciousness, loses its power in the presence of the Christ that those on the spiritual path can loose. Now, it lies within your power to accept this truth that there is in the consciousness of every individual who was ever born, the Christ, the Son of God, the Spirit of God, that about which we have been speaking here this entire period, this presence exists in the consciousness of every individual on the face of the globe and the spiritually illumined can awaken it in those still unillumined by their recognition of it. Now this is the modus operandi. Supposing we use this as an illustration, you are my student. And I am your teacher. What is my method of awakening you to spiritual awareness? And the answer is this. First, I meditate. 
I meditate in order to bring myself to the realization that within me, closer to me than breathing, within me is this kingdom of God or the Christ, the Spirit of God, the Son of God, the presence and power of God is within me. Since I and my Father are one, If this is true of me, I would have to be a horrible egotist not to realize that this is by divine decree. In other words, it is the decree of God that this Son of God be established in me. Therefore, I must realize God can have no special children. Therefore, the same presence is within you. God in the midst of you is mighty. The Spirit of God within you. And so as I meditate on this and I realize in each and every one of you Christ sits enthroned the very Spirit of God, which is your bread, the source of your wisdom. Because God is the mind of you, the source of your wisdom. And you cannot love yourself, lovers of God. Therefore, the love in your heart is really the love of God enthroned there. So the wisdom of God is enthroned in your mind and the love of God is enthroned in your heart. The Spirit of God is enthroned in you closer than breathing. And with that recognition, I just get still. No more thoughts, no more words. I let the peace of God descend upon me. I let his spirit bear witness with my spirit that this is truth. I remain for as long as I can in inner stillness, inner quietness, no thoughts, no words, that the Spirit of God itself may bear witness with my spirit and yours. And sooner or later, whether it happens the first time or the hundred and first time, I feel an answering click within me, a response a weight dropping off my shoulder, an inner peace. And then I know that his spirit has registered. Now, it may not register in every one of you on every occasion, but I'm sure that one of you or two of you or three of you will have responded and felt this presence touch you. And so it is that in time it reaches every one of you to some extent and then you yourself must carry on from there to bring it into its fullness. Now each time that you meditate, every day of the week that you meditate, for this purpose someone out in the world is being awakened. And it can be a president, it can be a senator, it can be a congressman, it can be a prime minister, it can be someone somewhere, it can be a minister, a priest, a rabbi. We don't know, and we don't care. We're not here to get credit. We're not here to be praised. We're here only for one reason. We do know that everyone who receives some measure of spiritual illumination can awaken in some measure those who still sleep. Therefore, this is our function and this is our contribution to the peace of the nation and to the peace of the world. 
realize within yourself the Christ, the Christmas day, let every day be a Christmas day of realization, and then loose that Christ into the world and let it touch those who are prepared. And thank you, thank you, a very marvelous Christmas season to you, and we'll meet before New Year's. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel, for sharing. Thank you for preparing us for peace. Thank you so much. So thank you for joining um, and listening to this. And so the, um, I'm going to play a song and prepare for the presentation that is given. I just received the link to it, so I need to download something. And in the meantime, we're listening to uh, a peace song from from Mr. Swartz. Yay, thank you so much. Uh, it's, it's a great song. I haven't heard it for a long time, but it's so beautiful. So thank you so much for joining in this, say, preparation for peace. It's Christmas Eve. It's about to happen and that the Christ can completely be in your awareness. And uh, of course, it's not depending on time, but it's a total gift to you. And that's the celebration that we really have. Uh, the rest is all great and wonderful. So.